G'day guys, welcome back to In My Shed, I'm BC. Just put the other camera on, trying a bit of stereo camera work here for a change. Uh, exciting news, machines are rolling. I've uh, got four machines running again. This old shaper though has given me a little bit of trouble. I've taken a bit of time to spring clean, it's something I don't often get to do, to get a little swarf off them, wipe the oil down and clean them up as they go. Um, this machine started up straight away, but once again, no oil pressure. And it's done it to me a couple of times before. Uh, it took a while for me to find out uh, what happened. I did a video of quite a while ago. The oil and the sock down the bottom is clear. I thought it was awful. The inside of the machine is painted yellow. The yuck that was in the bottom of the sump is yellow, and I just couldn't tell the bloody difference with my eyesight. But ultimately, I get a growth around the pickup strainer and I think it's because it's a copper tube, an aluminium ferrule on the end of it, a stainless steel uh, filter with a copper fitting on the end, a little bit of uh, the similar uh, metal action, the oil is pretty hydroscopic because it's a plain oil and I just get a great big ball of snot on the end of it and it can't suck the oil up. Surprise, surprise. So the machine runs okay, there's been no damage done in a minute of running. It's all just a plain slide and great big gears and bearings that just won't get to it with no load on it. But I've got to go through the rigmarole of taking the side plane off again and either pull the pickup tube out or use something to wipe the stone off the end of it. So I thought I'd take you through that, have a look on the inside and see what the cameras are like um, in the new shed getting set up here. It's going to be a little bit cramped on the other side so I'll probably be using the GoPro on that uh, stuck into something with a magnetic base. But we see how it all goes then. Okay, bring you in closer and show you the machine running. Now this is exactly what I want you to see. It's the operating side of the shaper. Very, very simple machine to use. But uh, as soon as you fire it up, the motor runs, nothing happens. Put it into gear, get the uh, ram moving backwards and forwards and the oil level fairly smartly comes up in the sight glass here and yesterday that just didn't happen so I'll give you the simulated demonstration just like you see on TV and you can see what doesn't happen. The background noise by the way is the phase changer and until we get the three phase on tomorrow there's just nothing I can do about that, sorry. Okay. So usually it takes three or four seconds and the oil level comes up and I could sit there I think waiting all day and it just wouldn't be. Bloody shame because it's a waste of a half hour or more to fix it. Yep, nothing's happening so I'll fit the side plate. Back to you soon. Okay, we're back on. This is a bit of a god awful spot to get much in the way of camera work done. There's a hidden bolt down the back, so I've made another short Allen key, <laughs> which I did years ago, and which I dutifully kept until we moved. And it's since disappeared, so I've made another one. And this is just a bit of fitting work, removing some socket head cap screws. I'm quite amazed with the way this thing is built. This is just a plain cast aluminium or shit alloy case and you'd expect it to leak like hell but it doesn't which really amazes me that no gasket to speak of no silicon or whatever and it doesn't give me grief in that respect although like all machine tools you do find a bit of oil around it uh, this whole girl isn't too bad actually even the main slide uh, there's very little ceiling, the cavity's open, front and rear is just a wiper to pick the oil up as the machine throws it around and that loses very pretty little. Hello, this one. I should be pretty good at this, I think it's about the fourth or fifth time I've been into this one. Okay. Now, 
can't get any lower than that. Right up. We'll get the uh, spotlight out, try and get a bit more light in there, and show you what the bowels of the machine look like. Okay guys, here's a bit of footage inside the CMZ running. And just up to the left there, you can see the cam running the plunger on the oil pump. It runs quite fast, but I can't see why that would not be pumping oil. There's the lay shaft in there. And if we can get down low enough for that to be caught up in the mechanism. That's where the feed pipe goes down into the sun. I'll get another light for that. Okay, try and give you a bit of an idea. There's the back of the pump. Cam up on top. And we'll follow the line down to the pickup. It's very difficult to get a better angle. But the oil level just covers the back of the pickup. And in my opinion that should be enough. We just can't get it to run. I'll change camera angle and come in from the side and show you all the gizzards. Sorry I can't get better footage but there's just not much room between the machines here. That's the big bull gear. Driving arm. It is all very well made and very sturdy. This thing would last a thousand years if you could just keep the bloody oil up to it. Okay, that's it for now. Enough. Well, here's at first glance what I thought would be the problem. And you can see what I'm talking about, the mismatch of material. That's an aluminium ferrule on a piece of copper pipe with a steel nut, a steel hydraulic coupling into a stainless steel fitting, a bronze gauze and pressed stainless steel end caps. I'm thinking, wow, that must have just been scrap out of the factory to put something together like that. But I'll be honest with you, there was no growth around the strainer, so that rules that out. Uh, as I lifted it up, I could hear all the oil glugging out of the inlet line. I'm thinking, what the hell? This thing was primed and ready to go and just not making any oil. Doesn't make sense to me. Now the nut that held the uh, pickup line in was firm. I won't say it was excruciatingly tight, but tight enough to pick the oil up. So I'm starting to shake my head. Right, we'll investigate a little bit further. Um, first thing I'm going to do is just put it back in and give it another try. Could have been a bad day for an oil pump. We'll see. G'day there guys. This is the old goat back again. I've got the oil pump out of it and I discovered a few things in the process. There's some plastic bushings for the three mount bolts. The top hat shape that fit inside a recess in the main shape of body into counter bores and meant to seal their retaining bolts as they go in and two out of the three have pissed off for a holiday so I'll have to knock them up out of a bit of brass or whatever and thank God Mike's coming tomorrow to put the power on the lay so I can do that sort of thing um, I'm a little bit surprised that this thing ever worked and I don't know uh, whether I should get a slap up behind the ear for not seeing the faults last time I had of the part or the time I had of the part before it's still ingesting a little bit of shite and I don't know where it's coming from. Uh, the screen is still in fairly reasonable condition. It is loose on both ends, but it's not loose enough for any poo to get past. Uh, the valving is a little bit strange on this. You've got the inlet fitting. Uh, down here which is this fella, got a ball inside there for a return valve, nice little super soft spring and a uh, little circlip to hold it in, dead simple, you can't get much easier than that. This is the outlet valve with a nice little spring, 
holds it into the body, and uh, that's the dilemma. Well, that lip valve fits in there. I measured the required length for holding the ball up against the seat at around 25 millimetre. The spring's 20 millimetres long. How the hell it ever worked in the past, I don't know. Uh, the spring is not shortened in any way. It uh, doesn't easily elongate. Whether there was a spacer at some stage in behind there, I don't know. Uh, no, it hasn't been machined for a spacer. So it's got me stymied as to what the hell goes on. I might try and stretch the spring or put a little bit of a spacer behind it. Uh, bore looks reasonable, although I've got to say the condition of the counter bore down the bottom is pretty ordinary. It's a lot of chatter as it was originally machined, but I think it'll go back together quite okay. Here's the piston, which contains a little top hat assembly for the spring to sit into. Uh, rough as hell in the machining on this particular part. And the only thing that I notice with the piston, oh, it's got a little bit of scoring, not enough for me to worry about, but the edges are absolutely razor sharp, both ends. So I'll be stoning those back to make sure it doesn't jam up in the piston, in the cylinder. That could have been what was happening. It could have been jammed up there at one end of the travel, I don't know. I doubt that very, very much. I think it's just a, um, a case of uh, the spring was never doing its job. When the ball did work, it was doing it by accident. And I've now got to fit it up in a way that it'll work reliably. Back in a sec with a little hint for you. Back again. The main screws that hold this pump into the body of the shaper are 8mm in hex uh, socket screws and difficult to get at in behind the main drive pulley, etc. And I did make up a shortened Allen key for the job last time, and that's been lost. Uh, I've made up three 6mm keys for the uh, outer housing cover, and thank God I found all three of those. But just by chance, I've got an old impact screwdriver set sitting on the shelf, and I don't know why, but they're 5 16th um, AF hex shank, and it fits right inside the 8mm socket head cap screws onto my ratchet ring spanner. So that made that job, instead of a half hour nightmare, quite easy to do. So a little in for the future. Find your old impact screwdriver sets. Tomorrow I'll be stoning off the piston, uh, cleaning it all up, assembling it back together, and finding some sort of shim to put inside the outlet uh, check valve to try and get it to seat the ball back down. But I honestly don't know how it's worked. With the spring being way too short for the cavity, I think there's a part missing at some stage. Bye for now. Well, this is what we wanted to see. Oil spurting out of it everywhere and running like it should be. I've got to say it picked up very, very quickly and uh, maybe it was just another machine that had a fault right from the start. But uh, we'll let it run for a little while, make sure it's going to be reliable and I'll stop it and Put the camera around the other side, you can see the slot glass filling ASOP. And it's going to be good to have the old girl up and running again. I'm going to have to readjust the oil feed. Otherwise the poor old slipper for the clapper retractor is going to be sliding. Oh, I think it already is over all the buggery. Okay, success. I'll put the covers on, um, cut it down and then show you how the oil up really quick. I thought I'd bring you in on this side of the old shaper. It's a very rudimentary oiling system just with a couple of metering blocks in the lines and at the top there is an adjustment and it's more of an overflow. It's not how much oil you put into the machine, it's how much you let go back to drain. And it's a very finicky adjustment and at the top here it just feeds out onto the ram and runs back down inside the guts of the machine but I've got it set down close to zero and you can see here that it's overflowed just in a minute running all over the slide for the uh, clapper retract so I'm going to have to back 
the oil off and in doing so just allows more down to drain. A uh, reasonable system like there's not much to go wrong with it in inverted bloody commas unless you've got to shim up spring under a bloody check valve. Okay I'll take you around the other side we'll spin her up again and show you how fast it's filling the side glass now and where the adjuster is. So back in a sec. I thought you'd like to see my smiling face again so here it is. I'll give you a bit of a squiz around at the shed and show you what we've moved and I hope we've improved a bit. Then we'll zoom in and show you a bit on the oil feed on the shaper and how well it comes up. Um, and how well it comes up too bloody much. I do remember when I first got it the oil was set to about zero so I've got to go back to there. Obviously it's deteriorated in the time that I've had it. Uh, we've changed a few things and I'll get behind the camera and show you. Probably the biggest change is sitting over the other side of the rider mower is the bigger power hacksaw. Little fella hiding in there behind the MIG welder. And now we have a, a bit of a change to radio alarm drill, straighten up a little bit. Uh, it's now up and running. The borer uh, made her squeal yesterday and put a bit of oil on it. She's running quite well. And now the shape is sitting here in the third row uh, with the old Cincinnati that'll be rebuilt in the background. However, I'm tossing up, do I rebuild the Cincinnati or the Toz? The Toz is probably a 15 year younger machine and it's already got the um, spindle assembly that's an outrigger to the main column. A bit like the high speed attachment on this one and it's got later model electrics. So it's you know, six of one half of us and the other can't make my bloody mind up. I like the Cincinnati because I've got a full kit of accessories but the Toz I think is a, a much better later model machine with micrometer stops and all the good gear. So we'll do a flow chart the uh, pros and cons of each machine and there's something that we haven't seen for a while a bit of clear floor space okay enough wind out of this old gas bag we'll put you over in front of the shaper and start her up and you can see the cycle a glass fill very quick here we are on the working part of the machine so I'll kick it in the belly uh, get it up and running and then throw the clutch in and you'll see they all come up fairly quick We'll just zoom you in on the adjustment there. It's hard to pick up the scale, but there's a scale of 0 to 2. Um, and you see the red arrow up at the top. Well, it's just a little bit above the 0, so I'll have to turn it down to 0 once I finish this. And it'll be trial and error to see if I'm right or not. Back in on the side glass, I'll make some noise and then throw the lever in. Okay, let's see how quick it comes up. Yeah, look at that. Up within a second. Even when the machine was really good, uh, that would have been uh, three or four seconds at least to fill the side glass. And now you can see it just slowly trickling down. The oil was gone instantly when the motor stopped previously. so. The pump output is substantially more than it used to be. Makes me happy, but now I've just got to put all that oil to spill. Okay, um, I hope you liked this episode, and if you did, please like and subscribe. And I'll try and get you another video either later in the weekend or early next week. Bye, guys.